Nathan? Um, yeah, this is uh, a clip. I hope I'm rem remembering the right clip. But this is a clip from a film called Room, uh, also shot in Toronto, mm -hmm. um, in Pinewood. And uh, this was a 10-week shoot, uh, very short and by comparison. Uh, the scene I'm showing is just, uh, I'll be very brief about it. There's an escape scene that happens in the middle of this movie that has a certain amount of tension and so on. This is not that. <laughs> <laughs> um, Basically, the escape scene in, in Room, uh, people talk about it, but it's funny if coming as an editor. Like, it's, it's a very basic edit. It's a very simple edit. There's a few, there's a few little things going on, there, but I always find it fascinating when people say, oh, you know, they're gripped by it, because actually, you know, thinking about it, I think it has more to do with this scene that we're going to show here, because, you know, in any, you know, I haven't got a lot of action movies, but quite often, you know, action scenes depend on how much you care for the character. And I think, um, you know, by the time the escape scene happens in Room, uh, most of the audience have invested in these two characters. And I think the scene we're going to show is basically, it's the second time that Ma has to uh, pitch to Jack that there's a way of getting out of here. Um, that in itself being the second type of something pro provided a challenge because you didn't want to re repeat the beat again. So. You know, quite early on in the edit, I can't remember at what point, but it was very early on, we decided to intercut a scene with the scene that came following afterwards. And for several reasons, one was to expedite the process, and two was just to help, you know, get more into Ma's mindset, as in, you know, here she is pitching an idea to her son. He thinks this is a good, well, not a good idea, but, you know, he's going along with it, but basically, in her mind, she's saying, I'm never going to see him again. So it's kind of trying to tonally play those things all at the same time. So that's a clip. Yeah. So I suppose the only thing I'll say about that is, like Lenny went through the process with Bree and Jacob of actually rolling up and rug many times. And that, like, in itself is a 10, 11, 12 minute thing, you know? So, um, yeah, it was just a question of, you know, how do we keep this ticking, but how do we keep tonally this tension, you know? And it's a very useful thing to do with a brilliant child actor like Jacob is that he could just play it real and he could just play it in the moment. So, yeah, like, there's not much more to say about that. As, as I say, it's just one of those moments that helps you, you know, if you weren't already invested in their struggle, I think you hopefully are by the end of that scene. And, you know, they've laid out the roadmap for how, how the escape scene is going to play out in front of you. So, in a way, there's no surprises there. But still, the act, the act of doing such a crazy idea, again, is kind of, a, you know, it's emphasized before you see it, you know? So, that's all I'd really say about it. And, and the kid, well, she got a nomination. Did she win the Academy Award? She won the Academy Award. She won yeah. the Academy yeah. Award. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. She's like incredible, you know, because um, from from the beginning of the shoot, I was over in Toronto for the shoot. Basically, Room was in a, one of the bigger Pinewood studios, but not the biggest. And basically, I was just upstairs in the production offices. So it was a constant dialogue with myself and Lenny and very talented DOP, Danny Cohn. Um, and it was great. It was just a wonderful shooting experience. Um, we were able to just see things constantly, just throwing things back and forth. They did shoot room pretty much consecutively. That was mainly to help Jacob get a sense of story, you know. But um, but it was fascinating working with a child actor. It changed, like Lenny, Lenny changed the shooting style uh, quite early on just to suit Jake, you know. And and like Jake is brilliant, but Lenny was so hands on with him as was Bree. Like they. Their relationship by the you know by that point that, that they were shooting that was really that close. So you know if, if Lenny didn't want to say something to Jacob, Bree could could pass that on, could help motivate him through the scene. But um, you know, th and again, your your number of the number of hours with a child actor is limited in a in a, right. in a shooting day. So everything was two cameras in the room itself, removable panels. Sometimes they'd shoot up through the floor through the through the but. Lenzi, Lenny had this rule that the lens would always have to be in room, so you could never come out of that actual space. Um, so yeah, just fascinating, incredible learning experience for me throughout. Yeah. I mean, the whole film was incredibly tense and, and compressed, Good. like room <laughs> yeah. was. John, 
Well, um, I've just spotted something we have in common, and that's Danny Cohen shot yes. this clip. Oh, uh, yeah. This is from the only um, verbatim musical ever made. <laughs> that was a challenge in its own right. It's a clip from London Road, and it illustrates um, a community who have discovered that a serial killer is living in their midst, and how the forces of the media and the press impinge upon that society. So without any more ado, um, it's a clip from London Road. to see the rest of it. <laughs> good, good, um, because not enough people have. Um, <laughs> it was basically shown on um, one particular day of the week, the first ever time a film has been shown in the National Theatre Live Strand, and it was, a lot of people saw it on that particular one night, but then it only stayed in a very few, too few cinemas um, from there on. But uh, it's worth a look. It's an extraordinary piece. Um, I remember seeing the play, and that sequence there, of course, the section with the press and the helicopters was something that a film can do that a play can't do so well. And so that section was never really in the play, but the, um, the music that was put together by our brilliant composer, Adam Cork, was all made up from recordings that the writer, um, gosh, I've forgotten her name, how wonderful. <laughs> um, I'll think of it. Um, anyway, the, the the music was all put together by verbatim recordings, Alecky Blythe, made by Alecky Blythe, from the people who had experienced this serial killer living in their midst. So the words you hear in that song were all taken from recordings. And basically it was just a, a way of exemplifying how the press came in and the director said to me, look, how can we make this more um, dramatic? I said, well, we could try using some slow-mo and then we could play games with taking the sound right out so that the score takes over. And that was the simple process that we used there to, to show how they were all being forced back into their homes. That was it. Absolutely fascinating. <laughs> um, I think we have about 20 minutes left, yeah. which would... <laughs> so sorry, we actually have to end now. This minute? This very minute. Oh. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm so sorry. But, uh, we took the longer because of the clips, and uh, yes, now they we're did. actually 15 minutes behind schedule. <gasps> Okay. So sorry. Well, thank you, everybody. <laughs> thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.